Hi guys, in today's tutorial I'd like to show you how you can build a field bus system. You may have seen my showcase on the field bus system that I've built for controlling the colors of 16 different beacons. This is way too complicated and super useless. So with this here you can actually do something useful. So I want to show you how to build this today. And before I do that, let me tell you that I have so many ideas for things that you can do uh, with the field bus. So different controllers, this is just a basic setup and you can um, basically get more different devices for this. Uh, so I want to create a playlist that you will find in the description where I will add all the different tutorials that are related to the field bus system. So if you want to see other things, check out the playlist over there. But now let's go into this. What you can see here is that I've got three different input areas that can basically somewhere um, spread along the world. This is quite close together right now, so maybe not the best example, but I don't want to fly around too much. And two outputs over here. What you also can see is that there's one line in the middle where all the inputs connect to the outputs. So this is very important that you have all inputs on one side and all outputs on the other side. Because if I had an input over here, you can clearly see that the input signal couldn't travel through, through this repeater in this direction and reach this output over here. So you will have to have one uh, spot where you connect everything together. If you want to have an input over here, just add a second redstone line uh, next to the first one that travels in the opposite direction. Then you can basically um, use it as a two line system. But um, I guess you will get the trick if you play around with it a little bit. So you can see that I've got two different outputs and over here I've got some different inputs. So if I hit this button here, we can see that the state of the piston back there, that's just a T flip-flop changes. If I go to this one over here and press this button, you can see that this redstone lamp changes. And uh, then over here, I've got two inputs next to each other. So this one here will change the state of the redstone lamp. And this one over here will change the state of the piston. Of course, all of these signals are just going through this line. And it gets detected which thing of these is addressed. So basically, we'll do two tutorials today because one is for the inputs and one for the outputs. But I would do them together. So if you want to build a basic input, then all you need is eight repeaters, eight redstone dust, two sticky pistons, a, a bunch of building blocks and a button. So um, I would just put one now next to this here so I can just um, extend the line and that's what you can really do. You just need to make sure that the inputs are all connected to that one spot over there where it goes to the outputs. So we'll just go over here a little bit and um, then you start by taking your sticky pistons and placing them one with one gap from the redstone line. And then one of them will have a three tick repeater and the other one a one tick repeater. The one where we have the three tick repeater will just have a single redstone line, which is five blocks long, just like this, and then drops down by one block. And the other one will have six repeaters here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one, the last one, needs to be on the full delay. And with these five, you can set the address. So we've got address one and two over there. And now I want just to make the address with all repeaters. Or let's say one is on one tick and the others are all on full delay. And you will see how I connect them then together when I build the output. So now I just need to hook this up to a button. Therefore, I just put the redstone around and then add the button over here. And uh, what this will do now is send a three tick pulse into the line first. So over here, this will create three tick pulse. And then after this delay, it will create a one tick pulse that it sends into the line. And uh, with the um, uh, yeah, delay in between the pulses, that is basically our address or our signal that we want to detect. If I press this button now, nothing will happen to these outputs because it's not the right address for these. These are addressed to one and two and not to, uh, I don't know how many ticks this are, but yeah, this combination. So uh, next, let us build an output. Therefore, you will need these materials. It's a bit more, but still quite cheap. It's uh, 10 repeaters, 13 redstone dust, if I didn't miscount, three comparators and two redstone torches, and of course, also some building blocks. 
So I will now branch off uh, from here, I think, because you can branch off anywhere where you want with your bus and uh, connect it then. Also, just make sure that it's connected to this one spot in the middle so the inputs are connected to the outputs. And um, then we can just start building this up right here. So what you want to do first is uh, put five blocks so imagine this one would go further in this direction because we had other stuff there. Five blocks away from um, your signal. So one, two, three, four, five. Then leave two blocks gap here and put a repeater on two ticks. Then next we want to put a uh, block in front with then a redstone torch on top. And um, then we want to longer the signal down here. So what we will do is uh, put in a redstone there and then we build a comparator fade out out of this. So comparator facing in, comparator facing out of the redstone and connect it. So if a part gets into here, it will be stored in here and keeps the signal longer. Then next we place a block next to it, then redstone dust. And then our address repeaters will be right here. So this is the first, this is the second. Then you could, can put a block or redstone dust over here. And uh, then the third address repeater. Then we will go up with a redstone torch and uh, two more blocks with two more repeaters. So what I said before with the repeaters over there, I had all on full delay besides one. So I can do the same thing over here. Put all on four ticks besides this one. This one will be on one tick. And then this will just go into this redstone dust, which will also be powered from the redstone torch. Then on the side here, we just put a block with a repeater that blocks this repeater. And that's why we built this line here, because this is where our signal will go. And um, then you uh, need to override the signal in the end. So we put a, another repeater here on full delay where the redstone torch is and put a comparator. So this will be overwritten. It uh, doesn't really matter uh, what is inside here. So if I just put a signal to this, we won't have any output out of here because this is overwriting the signal. And that's basically your um, addressing cell. So you just need to put the address that you put over there in the five repeaters into this five repeaters. And um, now you may want to hook up a T flip flop maybe to this. So you can do it like this with a uh, one tick pulse creator and uh, then you put a sticky piston um, and you can basically take your output from this block. The other thing that you can do that I did over here is just putting a dispenser with a water bucket that is facing downwards in my case and putting water in this gap because if a full bucket is here, we have a longer signal than with an empty bucket. And now all that's left to do is to test this if it's working. So if I press this button, the signal will travel through and in theory, we should now see this one activating. Besides, uh, this didn't activate. So let me check what's wrong. So it was just a tiny mistake over here. I forgot to place one repeater right at this position here. So it was offset by one tick. And now if I press the button over here, you can see that our T flip flop acts the way that we wanted to do. So um, note also that you need to have a little bit of a pause in between pressing the buttons because the fade out needs to empty. And now if you want to know, I can also show you how you can hook up multiple inputs next to each other. That's actually quite simple because you can extend the line over here. And um, let me just add uh, the other two that we had. So it, you do the same thing over here. You put one repeater on full delay and uh, then let's say this one over here is uh, the one and then here we add one tick. So this is address two and you add the um, sticky pistons and then the repeaters. And um, then you are good to go to also activate the other two. So this one was back there and this one over here was um, this one. And if you want to make your input a bit smaller because you just need one input, you can of course also reduce the amount of repeaters by just counting out the delay that you need and just put in the repeaters that you uh, really need instead of putting one tick repeaters that you don't need. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this is useful for you. So le leave me a bit of feedback if you want to see more of these Feedbus controllers. 
And um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, then feel free also to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and share this video with your friends. And I hope then to see you in the next video. So until then, have a great day.